the 3rd of May, 1808, also known as The Executions, was painted by Francisco de Goya y Lucientes. It is oil on canvas from 1814. You could see it at El Museo del Prado in Madrid, Spain. Goya is recognized as one of the great Spanish painters, along with the likes of Diego Velázquez, Salvador Dali, Pablo Picasso. I will analyze Goya's 3rd of May painting to better understand the context of message Goya conveys. I will focus my interpretation on his work through the following approaches, iconography, formalism, and colonialism. My intent for this project is to tell the story of Goya and how his paintings express his independent state of mind during Spain's troubling times. After many years of working for King Charles IV and his family, their methods of ruling Spain began to take a toll on Goya. His portraits of the royals began to look more realistic and less idealized. This was the most noticeable in the portrait of the family of King Charles IV, where you see the king's sister, Maria Josefa, with a large mole spot on her face, and the queen, Maria Luisa, is shown with her plump arms. His conflicting views began to affect his relationship with the royal court. Goya often saw himself as a fool for working for them. This is evident in a self-portrait where he depicts himself as a donkey. His work was at times also criticized due to the Spanish Inquisition. At one point, Goya was almost detained by the Inquisition for his artwork, La Maja. The irony was that it was commissioned by a member of the royal court. Commissioned by Spain's prime minister at the time, who Goya despised, La Maja was one of Goya's most controversial artworks during this time. The political climate in Spain was changing, and it was evident in the versions of La Maja. The invasion of Spain was a setting to Goya's Disasters of War series of paintings from 1810 to 1820. During this time, Napoleon and his forces were planning on colonizing Portugal with the help of the Spanish. Little did the Spanish know that the French had a trick up their sleeve. In December 1807, Napoleon helped Ferdinand VII, son of Charles IV, conspire against his parents. The news of the invasion of Spain by Napoleon reached the king and queen. They fled only to be captured by none other than Ferdinand's supporters. After turning his parents over to Napoleon, Ferdinand did not remain king for long. Shortly after, he was made to surrender his throne to France. One of Goya's most famous paintings was the 3rd of May, 1808. It came with a companion piece, the 2nd of May. Both art pieces display the scenes that occurred with the start of the French invasion of Spain. The French invaded Spain shortly after both countries fought together to capture Portugal. By invading Spain, the intent was to expand the French Empire by leaving Napoleon's brother, Joseph Bonaparte, in power. This was done quite easily because the French didn't meet much resistance thanks to Ferdinand VII. French troops were under the cover of just passing through to Portugal, but were really there to overtake Madrid and arrest the last members of the royal family. Goya's 2nd of May depicts the very beginning of the French takeover of Madrid. It shows the uprising of the Spanish citizens against the French forces, including the Mamelukes. The 2nd of May was the beginning of the Peninsular War. The French had planned to take over Spain on diplomatic terms by striking a deal with King Charles' son, Ferdinand VII, although the people saw this French presence at the capital for what it really was and began to rebel. The news spread that the French were there to arrest the last of the royal family left at the palace. Some suggest that the appearance of the Mamelukes resembled that of the Moors, which infuriated the Spaniards because they saw this as another invasion of their country. Goya intentionally did not choose a focal point like he did for the 3rd of May because he wanted to emphasize on the chaos of the event. It was the everyday citizen fighting back against their colonizers. By the next day, the 3rd of May, the French had decimated any resistance they met. The French had occupied the royal palace where it was surrendered with no harm done to the royal family. All those who rebelled or were known to have anti-French sentiment were hunted down and executed. In the painting, the focal point of this piece is the unknown man stretching out his arms, who is about to be executed by the French soldiers. 
Here in the painting, this man is the symbol. His innocence is shown on his face and his gestures. The iconography of this painting makes a religious connection. The man has his hands up to show his innocence, and on his right palm, you can see a hole which represents the stigmata or the markings from the passion of Jesus Christ. His peasant clothes are white and yellow, the colors of the Roman Catholic Church. Interestingly, these colors were not adopted by the church at the time, but since Goya painted this painting in 1814, he incorporated this representation. The representation of the white and gold symbolizes the defiance of the Catholic Church during this time as well. Months before the executions of May 3rd, French forces dictated to the Pope that his army would be incorporated into the imperial forces. Although they were met with resistance by Pope Pius VII, who did not want the Vatican State to be subject to Napoleon. On March 13, 1808, Pope Pius forcefully protested and ordered that the units that were still loyal to him substitute the Roman insignia colors with white and gold. This was the beginning of the separation of the Catholic Church from colonizing forces. Shortly after, the flag of the Popal States was adopted. Unlike many art pieces that depict war and heroic scenes and acts of bravery, Goya did not. The art piece shows the horrors of war and how these people were just being shot like dogs in the dark versus dying in a heroic and dramatic fashion. This was Goya's intent. He wanted to show the lack of humanity that war had caused. The men cower in fear with their imminent doom. Even a monk who is seen praying has no mercy when it comes to war. Goya's 3rd of May is representational with contour lines of irregular organic shaped figures. It has asymmetric balance and contrast from light from the scene to darkness of the night sky. He uses a local warm color palette with visual texture. The emphasis is mainly the peasant man along with the other civilians to be executed. The lantern at the feet of the soldiers shines the light at the unknown man. This is done in a way that makes the viewer see that this is not the divine light of God. There might be some intended cruel irony that the light is there just merely for the soldiers to see their intended target, much like a deer in the headlights. The soldiers display a few elements of art, such as directional force illustrated by their rifles and them facing towards the unknown man. Goya makes the soldiers look rigid, almost unconscious. They stand faceless and incapable of emotion. They can be perceived as death coming to collect. Other elements that you see is the variety of different colors each soldier wears and the overlap between their column. Goya's 3rd of May 1808 is arguably a scene of martyrdom compared to Christ, although it also shows a lack of humanity in others as well as the cycle that is death. The line of people awaiting to be executed represents the inevitable end. The unknown man represents the present fears and dangers he is facing. The dead corpses represent the fate that all the others will become. The chiaroscuro technique used by Goya keeps the viewer's eyes on the main focal point. The shadows both of the soldiers and the victims can be seen by the lantern's light. Today, the 3rd of May, 1808, is a political art piece that has become well recognized. Even if the art piece was criticized when it was completed for not falling into the status quo of what historical paintings were supposed to be, Goya's intent was to show the horror that really happens rather than the heroics. The war marked the beginning of the downfall of Spain's power in the New World as well having to fight for their own independence in Europe, set a domino effect in all the once Spanish colonies in the Americas. Many years later, Goya's painting went on to aspire his fellow countryman and renowned artist, Pablo Picasso, in his massacre in Korea. The war between Spain and France really set the tone for Goya and his follow-on artworks. In October of 1808, Goya accompanied Spanish General Palafox and his men to Zaragoza. 
Goya intended to paint the glorious deeds of the Spanish citizens against the French in his hometown. Instead, Goya began his work on some of the most disturbing works known as his 82 print series, The Disasters of War. In 1825, Goya fell seriously ill. A few months later, Goya would sketch one of his last self-portraits, simply titling it, I Am Still Learning. Goya died in Bordeaux, France in 1828 at the age of 83. Francisco de Goya y Lucientes may have died, but his artwork has stood the test of time and is seen by people from all over the world today. For many years, Goya's art piece titled Saturn Devouring a Sun has been one of my top three favorite art pieces of all time. The piece was originally a mural Goya did inside his house around 1819. It was later on transferred to canvas, where it could be seen today at El Museo del Prado in Madrid, Spain. Upon starting my tribute piece to uh, Goya Saturn, I knew I wasn't ever going to be able to replicate it, nor did I think I could do it any justice. There was no way I could capture the brutality in, of this iconic piece by trying to paint it on canvas. I felt the rawness of this piece by knowing Goya did it inside the walls of his house, so I thought the coolest thing I could do was try to make a stencil and spray paint it on a skateboard. After a few minutes trying to make a stencil, I knew it wasn't going to work. Luckily, I found a new method that I have since adopted to make prints from transferring an image from paper to wood. All I needed was a can of polycrylic, a brush, and a picture of Goya Saturn on a piece of paper. That was all it took to create one of the coolest skateboard graphics I've made in a long time. This concludes this video, and thank you for your time.